Welcome back to the Shoutout Podcast. I hope you're all doing good. Um, we have a fascinating episode today because our guest today is someone who's been making a lot of waves and noise in the design space with his companies Heirloom Naga, Kane Concept, and Ura Designs. Uh, he's bagged a lot of accolades and also got done a lot of big deals with uh, big fashion designers and uh, brands and businesses. Welcome to the podcast, Aku. Aku Ziliang. Thank you for making it. Thank you, sir, for having me over. Okay, let's been, keep it casual so that we'll have a, a good conversation. It's been very long overdue. Yeah, yeah. We've had this discussion, what, months back. Yeah. And then it somehow got pushed back. But I'm, I'm happy and also thankful that, you know, you could make time out from your busy uh, schedule. Uh, before we get into the many things that we're going to discuss today, uh, we'll start off with the small segment that I have called the, the shout outs. Mm-hmm. So I'll, I'll start it off. I'll give a shout out and you can follow it up with your own. Sure. My shout out for this episode goes out to the Hornbill Festival. Uh, this is, you know, the festival of all festivals and uh, a one of a kind spectacle that I feel doesn't get sort of the uh, credit it deserves. Um, this is a, a huge thing which our rich culture and tradition and all that we have to offer is you know put out on an international platform and uh, my shout out goes out to all the people the government and all the private parties and everyone involved in making this festival uh, a huge success because if you travel a bit if you've been to other festivals you will know what kind of a treasure we have in uh, the hornbill festival and also the kind of scale that we operate on um, my hope is to see us Nagas, although this is a festival for everyone, is to see our Nagas capitalizing on it and making the most out of it, uh, whether it's monetary gains, whether it's promoting your business, brands, uh, just networking, or simply just having a good time with friends and family, you know, make the most out of it. So that's my shout out, the Hornbill Festival coming up soon. So plan ahead. My shout out will go to ADN. Um, I think, you know, to me, these women have single handedly started a whole new industry. Um, not only here in Nagaland, but in you know, other places as well. So big shout out to them. Last but not the least, um, I wouldn't really talk about my mother's uh, company, Erlum Naga. Erlum Naga, by the way, is my mother's company. It's yeah, parent but they have. Yeah. Um, I would say let the work speak for itself. However, I will take this opportunity, this platform, to talk about uh, Erlum Naga Center, open to all. Uh, we have a private gallery accommodation. Um, we have a very nice uh, kitchen that we have come up with with Chef Akito Ali Jamomi. Uh, we have uh, showrooms and it's all about promoting and celebrating diversity, promoting our culture. So I hope to see you guys there. Nice. Um, we're definitely talking about that later in the conversation. We'll, we'll circle back to that, the heirloom center. Um, let's like, you know, start off with, I like to let the guests talk about their personal life or maybe their upbringing or their childhood a little bit so hmm. you know the our, our viewers connect with you a little more so just share with us a little bit about how it was growing up as Aku. Um, growing up was um, how do I say uh, we went to uh, a lot of us went to boarding schools from the family right um, this was in fact in the heights of the insurgency time there was a reason why we were sent to boarding schools so, uh, and uh, I would say this is that I'll keep this part short is that I would say I have experienced best of both the worlds, you know. Um, we went to Mayo Boys, Mayo College and um, experiencing culture from there, knowing things from here. Um, a lot of it I do practice in my work, you know. Yes, so like so many other people, um, I've been out of Nagaland for, for a very long time mm. and um, we mostly saw home as summer vacation, winter vacation. Right. But I think for me, it was a very conscious decision to come back in early 20, 2012, 2013-ish, you know. Mm. And uh, I, I purposely wanted to come back home, you know. Mm. And being the elder son. Uh, the responsibilities. <laughs> well, I hope my family is watching this. <laughs> so, um, I've had a few guests and like, you know, we all, a, a lot of friends, common friends who've all, you know, studied outside. So, like, what is uh, some... Just what would you say is like the biggest takeaways from, you know, uh, having the uh, opportunity to study outside from, I think, at very early age, you too. I went to boarding school at nine years of age. Yeah. Uh, I would say networking. Networking. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Exposure, networking. Yes. Yeah, I think exposure is one for me personally, like, you know, mm-hmm. 
mm. uh, when you get to meet people from like you said different races uh, yes. cultures and you know your point of view correct yes. widens a lot um growing up what were your interests you know like in were you a studious kind of kid or naughty and you know into sports and how do i put this um academic academically not very inclined honestly speaking mm. Mm. but i never how do i see this i never believed in the concept the construct between four walls you know you you would naturally want to question things you know right. knowledge doesn't only happen in class is what i'm trying right. to say uh but at a very early age i did want to study architecture i have a photographic memory of that specific day how early are we time. talking like sorry how early are we talking like um, when was like what class or age roughly fifth grade definitely oh, um, that's very early yeah. but uh prior to that maybe subconsciously also things have honed my sensibility skills i'm guessing that's the thing because my mother is also into design right so it was of course you know uh, it made so much more sense right um yes other than that um so i mean uh, you know fifth grade that that's very early that's why i said i have a photographic memory. yeah yeah so and you just mentioned your mom being already in that you know line of work how yes. how much of an influence was that on you know um if i had to be a little more precise uh i started doing um uh, design shows international fairs at a very young age mm. uh not that i wanted to of course mm, mm. But, uh a lot of these fairs would clash during diwali break holi break around that time okay, okay. so those days coming to naglan there was no good connectivity so right, right. it never made sense i would follow hmm. but it only added as a extra benefit you know because by the I'm time sure. i started working hmm. um, i realized i have a lot of friends in the industry hmm. so it made sense and nowadays you don't uh, so i when i say architecture I am not an architect, right? Mm-hmm. Interiors and furniture right. is what I claim. My partner Kavi, he's in he's a uh, trained architect. Mm-hmm. However, um I recently read somewhere that you know you don't need maths to study architecture and mm-hmm. these days I was weak in math. <laughs> so like, what the hell is going on? To be okay, let's just to so that the people understand a little bit about, you know, um uh you and what you do. Mm-hmm. How would you uh, define yourself? Like you know, like I was just asking this earlier. Like when you when someone asks you, like you know, what do you do or what are you? I still call myself a designer, mm. but also maybe I would like to think of myself as a storyteller. Okay. Because everything that we do, every single thing that we do, is about storytelling. It has mm. a narrative. It has a, so it's personal, mm. right? Um, we do interiors. my company i single handedly set up in 2014 at 21 years of age this is ura designs we're talking about yeah then a lot of the work that we used to do guilty as charged mm. i also did the crystal chandeliers mm. i also did molding on the walls um but with time with a slightly matured frame of mind with exposure mm. I found my calling, and lucky for me, I found my calling early, twenty nineteen. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I was at the AD Design Show. Our parent company won the uh, JSW Craft Contemporary Craft Prize, okay. um, uh, organized by the General Foundation. And I realized, you know, a lot of people were so intrigued about just the name Nagel and the brand Nagel mm. itself sells. I say this because I'm a Naga. biasly mm. and i also see this uh because there is a certain i feel this is but this is my opinion mm-hmm. is that there is a certain aura to mysticism mm. i think the other day when we were uh, when we were having a casual chat if you recall i did mention about um this so much of naga naga going on around the world right right but how many of us are actually representing mm. correct yes um So if you see in the design line there's so many things happening about Nagaland but there's no local representation mm. which I think is very sad yeah that needs to change yeah I would love to see more healthy competition mm. there should be much more people in this in mm. this fraternity at least in my line of work you mm. know to represent Nagaland to tell our stories from our own lenses mm. right is it like one of those um, 
industries or spaces where there's like plenty of room for everyone kind of there's enough for everyone to eat you mm-hmm. know it's only a matter of us willing to share with each other or not mm. right so then we started um, 2019 i started doing mostly um uh, traditional works okay somebody said tribal is a new cool yeah <laughs> definitely um, it's been for a while i think yeah uh, yes and 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 so um when i did that you know maybe for selfish reasons also it was personal to me mm. there was a sense of purpose and i realized there's so much of tremendous potential uh, in this aspect to grow but it's not only that you know you can employ so many people you know right. the kind of employment that you can generate in rural areas yeah so you know i think it's not about reinventing the wheel it's about working with the skills and resources that you have mm, that already right? exist how right? do you hone mm. that how do you make it better how do you tell your own story so we started uh, then we stopped doing those kind of works that we like i myself saw in the cities and i was trying to imply mm, just didn't mm. make sense then on we stopped doing things you know like the st- cliche things you mean yeah i mean well it's subjective okay. you know mm. but straight out of pinterest kind mm, of thing got it got it yeah yeah done mm. and so yeah so where was i so, so yes coming to the branding of nagaland mm. it's that also i think if you see nagas have been very well documented and then you have the apatanis and so on so mm. forth but um i think the vibrancy of nagas you you know there's there's a certain pulse mm. ami naga ase dei to kobolen true right so all those thing be tangible in times when putting those things into perspective giving ura design is we uh, working towards giving naga designs a certain definition mm. you see designs happened you see kashmiri design you see rajasthani designs french can go on and on mm. but has assimilation happened here mm. no right and in fact i would also like to highlight this is that um the there is always a debatable topic about oh but what if there is appropriation what if there is yeah. it offends people that's a big topic um keep it simple mm. there will always always be room for what ha- is traditional Mm. no one's taking that away from you but can you not carve out your own path for something contemporary for something new mm. right i mean we should be celebrating this and the kind and those who are doing these kind of works you should be promoting them you should be celebrating that mm. right instead of you know yeah i have uh, my take on this also it's i think you know as this general opinion of mine is that it become too sensitive this world i mean in general has become too sensitive mm-hmm. we, when we talk about culture mm-hmm. appropriation and all it's kind of feels like it's only the ones who are like the haters who see this you know just to be very honest it's uh like you said we should be celebrating people because we are doing art like you are doing your bit to promote our culture also in your own way right mm. so i think this is i mean again it's a matter of opinion for people from people to people but the way i see it is that unfortunately the world it is it's getting a little too sensitive for all these small things yes a lot of wokeness to be honest yeah, yeah. you know and then there's no shame in admitting it mm. however you know it's it's a little and i'm sure you know using this platform to talk about these things hopefully it changes people's perspective also right but um there will always be good and bad you know? mm. it's mm. a matter of accepting it or not also, right right but, can we backtrack a little bit and uh, so that the people uh you know uh, that haven't heard about you or what you do get a clear understanding of what is all uh, happening with uh, with what you're doing so like mm. uh, you told me that Erlum Naga is Erlum the, Naga is a parent company is a parent company which is early 90s by my mother 90s by your mom uh, okay uh, yes um and then we structured uh well she structured uh Kane Concept in early 93 mm. um so when i came back i took over Kane Concept at least in the designing part of it and this I, is before Ura designs um when uh, you came back inside okay mm-hmm. and uh all the export orders i handled uh, by kin concept in fact uh, kin concept are uh, naga are the only com- uh, companies bringing in, bringing back forex into nagaland you know mm. um we've been exporting for a very very for long, a long time, time yeah which is why a lot of people do not know about our work mm. outside yes when i say outside like 
in the cities within india yes uh, overseas yes mm. but uh, yeah so i felt you know maybe it's a good time to talk about all these things um, so Definitely. yes elum naga works with uh, uh, they do a lot of uh, textiles contemporary textiles mm. we employ 450 women out okay. of their homes um, not by displacing them mm. in different different clusters um, but only exports and there may be a company here here or the like domestic companies that we work with um, elum does a lot of interesting different different collaborations okay. international brands some i may be able to talk some i will not be able to talk because of nds that we have signed yeah, yeah. but yes 100% women based mm. organization mm. so mostly deals in textiles um yes and then uh, comes there are other natural fibers that we have started you know um uh, noodling around with okay other than that kin concept is the hard goods division yeah. um kin concept also uh, does a lot of exports still we do uh, to over 36 different countries mm. uh, but okay let me highlight this is that the lockdown mm. was a blessing in disguise mm. how i say this and why i say this is because immediately when covid struck a lot of our um artisans were unable to move also no because mm, of the of course uh, restrictions restrictions yeah. imposed and so um my immediate thing was okay forget about it pre-existing orders you know and other things how my job my role as a stakeholder as an owner was to protect my artisans and see to it that they have enough work with their hands in in their hands mm. so despite not having orders that was i utilized that time to um do a lot of productions and started catering to the domestic market well actually that's when we also started becoming more active on social media prior to that looking um, very looking um yeah, yes and there's no reason to that also actually mm-hmm. you know it's just um i'm actually <laughs> very technologically challenged <laughs> uh, okay but we have a very good team now and uh, so that's how things started so we were able to work with individual clients directly we were not at the mercy of uh, white labeling companies mm. and so uh, in that whole process i was able to pay my artisans more mm. so maybe that's a sustainable model in my own humble way not forever but maybe mm. temporarily maybe say for 10 years 20 years you know this skill labor in this line of work is hard to find you we do have a lot of uh, skilled artisans from uh, eastern nagaland mm. i mean i find it really really fun to work with eastern nagas the very bulk, very professional the bulk you'd say is from like the people you employ um so let me give a statement okay <clears throat> 100% of kin in bamboo that you see in fa- all the fab india stores for the last 15 years mm. till date have all come out of dimapur from here mm. there are more companies gudar is there in in the domestic market a lot of the hospitality chains but the other day when you came and saw my center i yeah. i i showed you how we do the assembly line all of that right yeah, yeah. all done by our konyak boys mm. so i think to us nagas it's a huge matter of pride you know? mm. um sometimes i also say that you don't have to be educated to be hard working mm. you know? to have sensibilities It's, it purely goes down to hard work with these guys and what kind of work are we talking about like you're saying the 100% of what you see in fab india like what um a lot of um, trays are fast moving items okay so we do a lot of that uh, and we'll definitely put up some images that a lot of furniture we do with them um lot lots of uh catering to the hotel hospitality industries mm. you know Um, like furnishing fast like moving items uh, hard goods and textiles we refrain because we mostly focus in export market okay um so yes and 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 then there is a uh, locally also we do a lot of uh, furniture upholster uh, timber so if you're looking to buy furniture please come <laughs> yeah us. yeah you can definitely <laughs> plug in <laughs> but um, i remember you telling me i mean this was way back when we met and then uh, at at your the same place the center and you were saying that obviously your priority is with exports right like the, the majority and mm-hmm. so business going well means there's hardly any left over you know uh, 
Uh, left over for the local market basically you don't no, target no, we do we do we do of, of course we do we we have a lot of walk in sales mm. um local market is also fantastic but um is limited um, is it kin bamboo ke liye man dam diwo sort of mentality you know it's changing no no yeah. but it's changing with you know people are more conscious buyers you know people mm. see again it's personal to people you know mola naglin bhai tuman bhal bhal samane the banai thake you know like that mm-hmm. So it's personal to people. Um, a lot of uh, people also make it a point to gift people from outside. You know, like, this is made in Nagaland. Yeah. You know, sort of. So we do have like uh, very good sales by God's grace. You know, mm-hmm. walk-in sales, be it be it e uh, e platform also. Mm. And we don't sell through any companies on e platforms. We are okay, okay. direct direct. direct. Nice. Yes. Okay. Um, that is uh, mostly. we talked about okay a little bit of erdum naga then uh, kane concept and then, and we're a design we're a design we also do a lot of collaborations by the way like um, an example of i've done like a decent sizable work with people from bollywood you know okay. if you see uh, we landed um cover page for l and ad which is kind of rare okay. cover page for two different that's uh, a that's a big deal companies. Uh, I uh, I did this collaboration with a very senior architect who's a, who's a good friend, um, Jacqueline Fernandez. Very kindly did uh, the whole shoot. What uh, was the the product? Oh, sorry, sorry. So this is called <laughs> the Naga chair. Uh, ah, the famous um, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, which is currently selling it uh, the Invisible Collection Gallery in London. In London. In London. Uh, yes. Okay. So I've always wanted to do gallery sort of works. You know, mm. I feel. A lot of people over the years have come to me and said production increase could be could mass be. production. Mm. There's only so much we can do with hands. I know mm. my capacity very well. You know, mm. not gonna chew more than what I can eat. Mm. And these are things that are done with hand. These are not mechanized things, right? So we say in Elum Naga now hashtag honoring hands is the slogan. Mm. And uh, so I feel that all these beautiful things that have taken. so much of time effort you know um quality over quantity is what i'm mm. trying to say hence the galleries you know i mm. feel representation as i was telling you uh, earlier on is so important mm. um so okay now like to yours and the one that you founded with your partner My that, uh, yeah yes. yeah ura designs break it down a little uh, bit about what what it is you guys do some projects that you've done Uh okay sure um Ura Design I started as I was telling you uh, when I was still in my university days I you know and it was a conscious decision for me to come back home because I could not study architecture because I did not have maths I settled with interiors and I love doing that you know mm. we practice architecture now in different different states um but I I say that interior furniture a lot of the work that we do mm. is very craft based you know uh so we started off by working within nagaland mm. um started off with a, a commercial project first and then secondly i think my big break was um a, a dear friend had come up to me and said hey man you, you do, would you mind doing the interiors for my space mm. now if i think about it What the hell was he also thinking? <laughs> <You know? laughs> But thanks to him, you know, I uh, I was telling you when I started working, I realized I have a lot of friends in the industry, and uh, mm. plus a lot of boarding school friends also who got into manufacturing. Come who come from manufacturing backgrounds, and just like me, they also started like say sister co- concern companies, mm, mm. so on and so forth. So it was so much easier. You didn't have those typical run of the mill industrial like okay, five hundred pieces MOQ, right, right. none of those things, you know. and we never never mm-hmm. never pick up things off the shelf from you know everything is 100% original mm-hmm. everything is customized now when people hear the word customization people think oh it's very extensive customization mm-hmm. well, not really you know if you have good roots in the industry mm-hmm. right so there's a lot of production that we do from muradabad from uh, uh, firozabad only for glass aranpur jaipur mm-hmm. and so that's how we started ura design uh, and then we started working in after nagaland meghalaya mm. so meghalaya not interiors. only furniture but interiors yes mm. 
still in process of doing more things in meghalaya yeah. currently still doing uh, interesting projects i think we are doing yes 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 in fact yes taj vivanta shilo we are doing in, in uh, yes we have already started almost handing over in, in the next week spa uh, and the gym sort of on a smaller scale but the terrace bar is interesting you know you have pb right there you get a 360 view of entire pb mm. and uh, interior works also include the show stop order includes the world's first live wall bamboo art yeah you're talking that is yeah, that based thing. upon a technology created by this scientist prof- professor who's also an architect actually mm. so we're basically borrowing this technology from him um let me only keep it to this cuz it's based on sensory movements and uh my whole thing here is uh sustainability meets technology mm. right so in the is not only about designing furniture for or doing this that you know there's so much more than meets the eye mm. for our design we have taken up we are doing lots of projects outside northeast as well mm. so assam we are working very extensively um in fact i'm headed to uh, pobitra tomorrow mm. how many of us even knew that you know pobitra has uh, where is even pobitra no right idea. next to guwahati yeah it's about mm. an hour um uh, highest density of rhinos in the world uh-huh. one hundred i know it's not kaziranga mm. there is no infrastructure nothing so we have come up with the we have uh, a new property but okay. that will be delivered by next year mm. um but other than that guwahati is a place that we've been working very extensively a lot of the work sometimes we cannot publicize we For cannot sure. post yeah, yeah. people yeah. have this thing of like this thing of anonymity mm. or privacy uh goa is where we are working and i can talk about the things that we are doing in goa like imagine like you know doing uh inspired by nagaland mm. avado in goa so for a lot of people what who might not know what avado is avado is a um think of it as a bungalow that originated during the portuguese occupation in goa mm. okay. right so all of that Hashtag represent Nagaland. Mm. Uh, How do you incorporate? Like you said, for you, like you know, storytelling is also like you. Yes. Identify as Everything a storyteller also. Everything to me yeah? has mm. to have a story, because again, like I said, it's personal. Mm. So yeah. Okay, so now we have you know touched on the different uh, parts of uh, you know your the brand, which is the mother company is basically Erlum Naga. Parent company, yes. Parent company. and then under which comes uh, gain concept yours uh, heirloom naga uh, sorry uh, ura designs i mean <clears throat> you've mentioned a lot of you know projects that you are doing here and there which which that in itself is a you know big accomplishment getting that many big big uh, you know uh, projects but besides that i'm i'm uh, very well aware of you know a lot of accolades that you've won uh, not all i don't know everything but uh, quite a few plus you know uh social media i see you know you bagging <laughs> all these big deals with uh big name whether it's designers or brands mm-hmm. and so i feel is very important uh for some people they feel a little uncomfortable when i ask them to do this and all which is to sort of be uh <laughs> proud about yourself and speak about your achievements because you know i i feel uh we should be celebrated we should like it should be a positive thing it shouldn't be looked at as bragging or anything like Thank that you. and uh, like you said I, you guys are pretty low key for the kind of achievements that you have you know uh, done and gotten so this this space i'm going to give you in this time to just run off on all you know on at least the ones that you can speak about some I of the ones that you're proud of i feel a little awkward for the longest time and i still do mm. yeah understandable But if you're asking me to flex today <laughs> <laughs> i am um all by god's grace to begin with mm. you know um sheer hard work that we have put in you know and that is we are enjoying the fruits of that labor now mm. um lots of interesting collaborations that we have done that we have not signed ndas that i can talk about mm. accolades and awards yes um uh last year was a big year for us okay because uh, we won edida uh, edida in interiors and architecture is the highest level of award 
you know okay in india and in so many different countries as well adidas stands for el decor international design awards oh. by organized by el decor magazine okay so we won y- uh, young talent of the year last year and got runners up also for furniture wow so, uh, uh, so that was like a big thing for us um, mm. then we got like say, co- more opportunities for collabs brand endorsements mm. um represented um india at the ambiente design show ambiente is also like a big big good That's design show okay. it's in mm. frankfurt so we we so we did that in february um immediately after adida was um, late october if i'm not mistaken and in november um we we brought in christian lumton to nagaland yes uh, i think every everyone on social media so that people have been asking yeah. me ki kuriya so what are you yeah. guys doing um maybe in good time i will share but there are certain things that we have already done that i can talk about mm. uh so we recently did for his new hotel in uh lisbon okay. the entire facade of the hotel mm. is draped with our contemporary textiles mm. uh, which is crazy if you think about it you know and you should look up his uh, look look it up it's there was a very interesting article done by financial times um and is already operational okay. so you will find those things there but you know what was surprising and what was also my aha moment and yes it was motivation also because like say let me give you an example is that this 10000 different things he came to us and he saw but this is where experience comes in you know mm. having an eye for such things is that he just pointed two three things and said i want this 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 and you ma- match it up and voila there you go mm. and then for us that was like aha you know mm. i guess you now sort of a thing in february i had i visited him and um, that's where i saw all the production happening and my thing is that you know how much of uh, employment i can generate you know uh, increase people's livelihood you've like just touched on something that i want to discuss about like when you said about basically uh, trying to increase employment uh-huh. and uh, you know about payments and such so in the beginning you said what uh, erlum naga has about 450 employees mm-hmm. mm, not about like we have 450, 450. women employees. women employees and then uh, the, but you said some of these are in clusters right see understand the whole uh, setup of this is that unlike other societies mm. you talk about weaving like a lot of good work in silk this that is coming out of bihar bengal you know there was a generational thing mm. ours wasn't ours if you wanted to wear clothes you needed to know how to weave mm. if you wanted a basket you needed to know how to weave mm. you know everything was nijor kurbo lagi jay chilo so we never saw this as an occupational thing mm. right and so i do understand in many different different pockets of nagaland people are not going to be for like you know as a job job 24/7 mm. that's not going to happen mm. you know, let's not even try and you know do that i want but i want you to kind of explain how it works like uh, you said some are in house but you ah. have like 450 like how do the clusters um, work how do you so go about do upskilling and all there know? are certain trade secrets that i have to protect but, yeah of course um, of course that yes is. but we do have think of them as like say matrons or you know in charges in different different, different areas mm. so our center is are where we distribute Nagaland. the work the yarn everything yes 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 um we do have clusters for uh but Asam, primarily Asam, in nagaland assam and tripura also but not for loyal loop but mm. for hard goods okay. by hard goods i mean cane and bamboo cane and bamboo but um sometimes designs clients give us um sometimes you know but most of the time we are giving her designs you know we are mm. the ones telling our story so something that also i can talk about is uh, recently we had also uh, our parent company had done uh, banana republic has gone home for the first time mm. which they were very instead of uh, white labeling they were very uh, mindful to talk about elum naga and what the product is about you know they okay. didn't leave us in the background okay and so it's a matter of pride for us mm. i think it's important to put mm-hmm. it out there and like uh, just show our appreciation also mm-hmm. one thing i want to talk about like that day when i visited the the center Mm-hmm. is uh, and you mentioned that in your shout out also mm-hmm. was the gallery or oh yeah yeah 
or how do you define it? What, what, it's a gallery, right? Basically, it's a small gallery. Yes, yeah. um, but along the uh, lines of a museum. Uh, gallery, yes. Gallery. Museum will be on a much larger scale. But yes, correct. Um, it has a. Um, Let's talk about it this. A, Very it interesting. Has a, it has a visual gallery where we're doing mm. documentaries with um, Take One. Fantastic mm. job that they, these these people do. And um, the gallery basically shows mostly to begin with uh, traditional things. So for lack of a better word, I will say hoarding. Mm. I have a habit of that. I collect a lot of antiques, you mm. know, Naga antiques. And so does, the, does my mother. Maybe I got know. it from yeah. Nelson. So there's so many different things that people have to know. You know, generation, our generation and the ones to come are to know. Because mm. you see certain things, mm. you will only see it in a British museum. Mm. You will only see it in a Pitts River museum. Yeah. Uh, which was apparently donated. But, you know, anyways, <laughs> and that's it's another whole there, issue. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's another. Bit, <laughs> but yeah. you know what I'm trying to say is, your for a society that has not, we have not had our own script. Mm. So it's only by way of oral tradition. So our textiles, our handicrafts are our uh, part of our heritage. Mm. So people have to know, right? That's a and fact. And for me, luckily, I am interested in this is sort of in my line of my area. Mm. So I have a better understanding and I collect and I see things and there's so many things, right? You would say, like, even if I sh show you certain things, like the other day I showed you this mm. typical raid code, right? Um, you could have said that was African. Yeah, I mean, if you I told mean, me, I would have believed it. Right? Yeah. So people need to know these things. Mm. Um, I think one one thing that because I'm fascinated mm. also with our, our our you know heritage and obviously not an expert at all. But when you showed me that, uh, give me the you know the quick tour of when's it opening by the way? Um, you were saying November, November is your target, yeah. November. So when it opens, I mean, uh, I hope everyone visits this place. It's a must visit, and uh, you know. Of course, you'd want people to come there and, and visit the place and see all the items that mm -hmm. you have on display that you've collected over you know long periods of time. I think it's but, but if you can sorry if yeah. you can give like uh, a story about one and we're gonna put up the image of this whatever that you're gonna talk about and sort of describe one of uh, your sort of your favorite collectibles or. <laughs> I don't want to be biased, you know. Sometimes I feel that I have been very lucky or I have been fooled, you know by dealers can ah, yeah, yeah. Mm. but um, there are a few products that okay. one or are two. very That's close to my heart yeah. it cannot be one okay, okay. so uh, recently I got my hands on and I got 450 pieces of those is that cognac men used to have um, their hair clips carved out of elephant bone not tusk mm. and so they have a lot of carvings on those mm. bones and it's only, only, only worn by headhunter men, mm. right? But out of those 450 pieces, there were about seven pieces which had depictions of peacock and we all know what a peacock looks like. Mm. So, I mean, what is the connection? So, that opens up a new uh, uh, t uh, sit down for conversation, let's say. 100%, um, yes. It could be a very interesting collection. Also. Very, very. Just thought of that right now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, other than that, there are certain baskets and all. And like, Mota Manu, I also never thought, you know, like, these are things that would interest me. Mm. But when I saw, uh, and when you see galleries, over, when you visit galleries overseas and you see it and they talk about, oh, this is wo woven by Nagas. There are like so many different types of weaves over here. You know, um, it looks very primitive, but it's uh, very complex. Mm. Right, I mean, why aren't we doing it? Mm. Right, and these are all things that have to come out from rural areas. You know, when I say again, it's personal, it's personal. Quarter, I do understand, and I say it very proudly that there's a certain form of moral responsibility that I also hold. Mm. Correct, yeah, yeah, for sure. So, yes, we are not an NGO or anything of that sort, but mm. you don't have to be an NGO to, you know, do good things, mm. right? In a, especially, like, I think, you know, in a small community, a homogeneous community, um, there's a lot of negativity that comes out. Mm. 
you know uh, we nagas are this we nagas are that we this yeah. this it's going overboard now this too many keyboard warriors oh. um too much of moral policing under microscopic yeah, lenses yeah. but let me remind you this okay let me ask you this show me one naga beggar show me one naga beggar i say neither na what does that say about our society is that kiki we we're going to you know we're going to vouch for each other mm. in good times like weddings or in bad times like funerals also the whole community comes together as a whole so what i'm trying to tell you is in this whole time we have forgotten or maybe we don't remind ourselves each other that of the good things that we do and we have and we must celebrate and share mm. it with the world right Don't you very agree? true very true i this is one thing that i preach man on a regular like yes. about the the, posi- the the podcast also stems from something that i wanted to do which is to bring more positivity correct we are right now like you said it's like uh, we're drowning in this negativity yeah. and there there's so much good in everything that if you just take the time to see uh-huh. like you said in in such circumstances like a funeral also yeah there are such positive things where is this <coughs> unfortunately uh the balance is sort of tipping that way i feel but like you know it's on us to try and spread like you know mm. positivity you're doing it through your work i you like know, that i think sometimes for a society um this is what i tell myself sometimes also take it easy man you know take it easy and i mean to the other naga brothers and sisters also take it easy don't be so harsh on yourself sometimes you know mm. where am i going with this is that you know so this is one of my original sayings huh? from a, you know from bullock cars to bmws but mm. isn't it true in that whole process we have lost so many things right mm. um but uh how do i say we have become westernized so fast so fast right that there's a lot of things that have been lost in mm. between mm. right and also like i maybe a lot of the frustration is also from you know like how are you saying the fast forwarding of like from the bullet cars to the bmw uh, yes definitely as it is of no? course yes like life was hard you know mm. and i say this is because at least my generation i can say that from vcrs we have also seen i clouds um so i understand you know that uh, that iman uh, jolly we've moved forward mm. you know we have to try and keep up with you know that super Keeping fast up with yeah, the genesis yeah. definitely you know um so yeah don't take it easy man you know like don't be so harsh on yourself yeah. just circling back to one thing that you said way back in the conversation about mm. how how much naga sells or like you don't even have to sell it anymore and like you know the fascination with it what would you attribute this to like the biggest thing is it like you know the obviously everyone always says the rich culture and all I anything in specific i don't know if i have a definition to that mm but you know the first thing that comes to my mind spontaneously is when you say naga na there's a certain pulse that vibrates with that mm. okay um yes culture vibrancy food oh yeah when you talk about food food from north east ko ado kya hai naga food hai mm. you see all these fantastic pages that have come out from nagaland all about naga food mm. And I'm sorry people but naga food does not only start and end with pork with bamboo shoot there's so much more to that I think you know yeah correct yeah. and 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 so yes these are there um what else is there um let's call naga designs a soft power that we are exporting mm. now mm. right definitely but I don't know it, it's it's all just worked out you know mm. so why aren't we celebrating that exactly and there's something unique about it right uh, yes, the naga and, brand and, and, and and why aren't we supporting each other you know mm. instead of pulling one each other down mm. you know you know how powerful that is when once we start doing that like we said like i said earlier also about the positivity i think we need to push each other mm-hmm. in in the right direction mm-hmm. and uh, you know we're all in it to win it but i think there's plenty of space for everyone to win also to I, eat one small example is i think scrt has started making true take one i think yeah yeah true take one they're making those educational kind yes. of uh, videos fantastic amazing i've seen yeah yeah, yeah. big shout out to take one yeah. yes definitely so one thing i want to quickly touch on is like you know you have you said 
450 women employees, uh, albeit in clusters. Then with your URA design, you have your team. URA design, yeah, we have a lot yeah, of people own... working from outside of Nagaland. And and here also, and right? Mixture. One, two, two uh, like interns here and there. Yeah. From and overseas with all these people that you work with like employees uh, in-house or not but you know with all these people that you employ and with all your work experience you know you're traveling to different parts of the cities outside uh, mm -hmm. india what's your take on work culture because uh, i see something is like you know up with um, when i say like uh, naga's work culture mm -hmm. the professionalism is something that i've witnessed in my specific line of work so I want to ask you about what's your take on this? No, as I, I think, you know, sometimes I have gone mad you know, and the world is fine. Hurdles have become problems now, you know, mm. and that should stop. And it's just not only me. It's every stakeholder in every different field is talking about the same thing. And this has been going on and on and on. Mm. It's a very dangerous um, trend that we're heading towards, you know. Mm. Um, but let me ask you this, is mm. that if you go to a city, uh, Delhi or Bombay, Bangalore, wherever, mm. you put in those hours, you're super professional, you're there on time, but why not here? Mm. What has gone wrong? Mm. If people can talk about pay, there are enough people now in Naglan willing to pay you like that. Mm. But please put in those hours also. Mm. Yeah. But um, feel, there's, yeah. it's not one thing, but um, it's so many different things, right? Um, people have been facing problems. Mm. Maybe sometimes I also think growth is also slow because of all these things. Mm. Right? So that needs to change. Right? I mean, I why are we getting people from outside? Like, yeah. From different, different states and outside Northeast, you know? Mm. It's because... And, whether, and where you'd rather... Emotions have, are like, sensitive. Know? Egos are thin. Yeah. You know, all of those. It's very unfortunate. Um, dosti karega, to kya khayega? Mm. <laughs> I think, you know, like now it sounds a little uh, contradictory, like we were just talking about being positive and all, but there are some things that we have to address. See, like, it's um, not being like, yeah, uh, yeah. You see, know. certain issues, so, which is why I think you also have a platform like this to speak about things. If right, you are yeah. un unable to speak about issues, solve yeah, problems among yeah. us, exactly, mm. right? And I hope we don't get cancelled for this. <laughs> no, definitely not. Yeah. I think our take was very moderate. It was like, you know, super moderate. But it is what it is. There are things that we need to talk about. Yes. But just not, let's not just get stuck on the negativity is what I'm trying exactly. to say. You know? There's like, so much of positive things that have been coming. Or it's just that we don't talk about it. Or it's just that we don't see. Mm. Maybe we see it as mundane. Yeah. I don't know. You know? It's all, yeah. At the end of the day, to each his own, right? Like to how they look at the world or the situation mm. that they're in and such. But we've talked about you know, quite a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, coming to wrapping up the podcast soon, but uh, before we do that, I want to know what lies in the future for you as an individual, like as a you know person, human being, and also with your career, your work with uh, Ura Designs and the whole works. You know, like Heirloom mm -hmm. Nagan as well. Um, I hope what we do impact a lot of lives. Mm. You know. Um, much more than we can imagine. I hope and pray that I am able to define what Naga designs are, give it a definition, give it a certain place, re respectable place in the world, which we already do, but local representation is not happening. Um, for all of these, you know, what we do is a microcosm of much, much bigger things to happen. Mm -hmm. you know? So... It's a very good time for all of us to be here in Nagaland. You know, now at least we have peace and stability, mm. right? Um, everybody who's gone outside comes back. You know, in different different fields. Like you've never seen uh, local people in so many different diverse fields. Exactly. Like, I would have never thought of like Nagas doing podcasts. Mm. You know. Mm. So future is definitely bright. You mm. know? I agree, hundred percent with that. Um, we're going to wrap up. I'll let you give a message. I, in fact, two. We always end it this way. So one is basically to your either your like family, friends, or someone you know. Just give a short message to. And second would be maybe like uh, the people of Naglin in general. Like, you know, just a general message to the Nagas. People of Naglin, practice what you preach. Um, be original. Mm -hmm. um, to the youth, be humble. Walk the walk, talk the talk, but be humble. 
and any anything to some family friends any quick shout no, to, out to, to f- friends and family i would say this is that you know i love you all um thank you thank you for always 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 having my back you know despite ups and downs so i love you all okay thank you so much akku for you know taking the time out thank you. and hopping on the podcast you are you know a gem of a person and i feel like you know a real ambassador for people and thank i hope you, you sir, continue for having to me over. reach greater heights and make us proud thank you so much for giving me a platform and enabling me to tell my story you pleasure know. pleasure was all mine so, thank you so much